It's not often that we talk about iOS or even iPhone over here at 9to5Google, but for those entrenched within the Apple hardware ecosystem, you have access to a number of iOS exclusive Google app lock screen widgets that you won't actually find on Android in iOS 16. Are they any good? Well, we've gone hands on to find out if Android users are actually missing out. Thanks for watching 9to5Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. So a little bit of background here, if you weren't aware, well, Apple's recent attempt in iOS 16 to implement an always on display on the brand new iOS devices is not exactly what we expected. It's almost a never off display rather than the dimmed, almost monotone options that have become a synonymous or customized with Android. In iOS 16, Apple also introduced basic widgets to the lock screen for the first time, which is something that many Android OEMs have supported for a long time at this stage. In terms of functionality, they're nothing more than window dressing and act more like shortcuts for your favorite apps. They're not really widgets as we would see them. That hasn't stopped Google though from adding a few of these iOS exclusive lock screen widgets for six of its apps, Google Maps, Search, Chrome, Google Drive, Gmail, and Google News. You literally won't find anything like these on Android unless we actually see a huge shift in how Google sees their own mobile OS in Android 14 and onwards. So let's get into this hands-on and give you some thoughts on what's good and what's bad. So the widgets for Google Search, they require a dedicated Google Search app from the App Store. So if you're wondering why you don't have them, if you do have an iPhone, just go and download the Google search or just Google from Apple's digital storefront. It's obviously not baked into iOS like it is on Android as we're used to, as none of these apps actually are, but you will likely use them more consistently or just as consistently if you're a Google or you're entrenched within Google's software ecosystem. You can place two search widgets on your home screen here, a double sized or a single toggle that will open directly into the text field search bar. Voice search will instantly launch into a basic assistant powered full screen view, provided you do have microphone access enabled. And if you don't, it will ask you that anyway. If you do hate Siri, we think this could be a way to get a more powerful voice assistant in a prominent quick access location on your device right there on your lock screen, although it's harder to find when your phone is unlocked. The two most powerful options here though are widgets that allow you to launch straight into Google Lens. And this might be something we think some of you might wanna add. A basic lens option just opens up this section of the Google app. Basically, you can just take a picture, the viewfinder is available there. But a dedicated app feature widget can be changed to any option of translate, shopping, or even a solve homework function. Just add it to your lock screen, then tap to expand and choose your preferred tool. This will obviously save a lot of time and effort, and we can see it being useful in a wide variety of scenarios. Chrome has a number of neat, just one by one widgets that can be placed on your iPhone lock screen here. These just include a quick new tab search option. We'll will just take you right to that text entry field of your favorite search engine, or even if it isn't Google actually. A quick incognito tab option or provides the same utility, but this time in a non-tracked search window. The voice search option is similar to the Google search widget, but this launches voice search within a new tab browser. It also means that you can close it and open a new tab without completely limiting access as it does with the Google apps option. By far the most fun inclusion though is a one by one Chrome Dino game widget. Tapping this just launches straight into a new tab where you can start jumping over as many cactus or cacti, I think it should be, as you can actually handle. And this is the game that you can play in vast majority of Chrome browsers across mobile and desktop when you don't have an internet connection. If you do use Gmail as your default email client, the lock screen widgets for iOS will be especially helpful here too. The Gmail widgets are a little different though, as you can even add a top line to the default lock screen clock as well. This just shows the current calendar date with a prompt indicating just how many messages or unread messages are available to you. The two by one rectangular Gmail widget also shows categorized inbox sections with little counters like primary promotions and social. If you do have Google Chat and that is active with a workspace account, you may also see some unread notifications here as well. The most simple one by one widget just, just shows how many unread email messages you have waiting with the Gmail logo underneath. And that might be the one that a lot of you do pick anyway. Tapping any of these widgets just takes you directly to your inbox within the Gmail app and that's it. 
As with many of these, so long as you use Google Maps as your default versus Apple's own options, and you use Google Maps as your default navigation method, then you can access some neat quick toggles alongside that at a glance information. And this kind of mimics to an extent what you might see on Pixel phones from now on. Basically, the Maps widgets offers a frequent twi trips two by one widget, which should learn over time what kind of regular journeys that you do take. If you have a home address set and a preferred transport, transport method as well, it'll offer default directions to those places, uh, traffic conditions, and the estimated journey time to that specific location, which might be especially helpful to you if you want to quickly look at that and you're on your way home or you're going to work. The one by one maps widget can be customized so that you can just quickly search for prominent or what you would deem useful locations like restaurants, local amenities like coffee shops, parking, electric vehicle charging and gas stations, hotels and a few more depending on what region you live in. When paired with the Google Lens shortcuts, we think this actually could be really helpful when traveling internationally, especially if you are an iPhone user. The Google News lock screen widget for iOS just offers a simple live news ticker, which is based upon your previous viewing or reading habits and then any of your interest subject areas. It only comes as a simple two by one icon size, which just shows the publication name alongside the Google News logo, while the headline is just found underneath in a little bit more prominent text. Each new story will periodically change throughout the day. Well, you can't swipe or tap that, but when you do actually tap the widget itself and your phone unlocks, it just opens the Google News and then loads the publishing site within the application page viewer, not actually a tab within Chrome. It's all open within Google News itself. Of all of Google's iOS exclusive widgets of the 16 widgets that are available, the drive option feels the most out of place, at least to us. Acting as a way to just quickly access any uploaded or shared files, it doesn't really feel best suited to your lock screen on a smartphone, but if this were available on iPad, we could see it being a bit more useful over there. Sadly, it isn't. There is one two by one widget here for suggested files. This just shows a snippet of any text files or offers a little bit of information based upon when you last opened or used Drive itself, while two further one by one widget options for search, just like you jump into in-app file searches. The start widget lets you quickly access any of your favorite files without actually needing to unlock or launch the Drive app, and it just quickly does that in, uh, as soon as you tap it. But overall, it just feels a little bit out of place, especially on a smartphone. But if you do have a work device, it might be useful to you, for you there. That's all we can really think about that one. So to summarize that, I think if you use an iPhone, the new widgets are likely going to be pretty useful for reference. But in terms of overall functionality, Google's iOS lock screen widgets really don't add that much. Apple's limits on the number of toggles that you can place on your lock screen also means that at most you can have up to four small one by one or two double size, that's two by one widgets, or a combination of two small and one large widget per profile on your device. The only upside is you can have multiple profiles with multiple widgets on there, depending on what access to applications and widgets that you do want. Visually, we think this does make sense, but in terms of actual functionality, it can feel a little bit inhibiting. However, it is a step in the right direction for people that do prefer iOS over Android, especially if you are someone who uses a lot of Google applications. You do get a little bit of extra always on display utility without sacrificing Apple's often cited clean aesthetic. If you do use an iPhone, and how have you found these limited pool of Google lock screen widgets if you do use them at all? Do you have a favorite? And what apps would you like to see added in future? We're sure that Google might do that later down the line. Let us know down in the comment sections below. This was a different kind of video for us, but hopefully you did enjoy it either way. Until next time though, this is Damien with 9to5Google and I will speak to you later.